This digital image of whatever this is supposed to be is worth millions of dollars, and the cheapest JPEGs from this so-called Bored Ape Yacht collection are fetching no less than 200 grand. They're all part of a new breed of digitized art called NFTs, and in 2021 alone, people spent $25 million on them. Confused? Yeah. Let's explore this. NFT stands for non-fungible token, which does little to help us understand what it is. Broken down further, non-fungible means that it is unique, unable to be replaced. The token can be anything digital like art, gifts, an autograph or music, even tweets. For example, this first ever tweet was turned into an NFT by Twitter's Jack Dorsey and sold for just shy of $3 million to an anonymous buyer. All right, so now that we know the definition, let's understand the how, as in how are NFTs created and what makes them unique? And later we'll explore what makes them, at least some of them, popular and pricey. First, NFTs are created by a process called minting, where you convert the digital file, that's your image, music, autograph, into a non-fungible token or a unique digital asset that's recorded on the blockchain. But wait, what's the blockchain? Okay, so this is an encryption technology best known as the digital ledger that records and secures Bitcoin transactions. But the blockchain is not exclusive to Bitcoin. There's also the Ethereum blockchain, which is the crypto blockchain assigned to NFTs. Now, when you mint an NFT using its blockchain, the NFT receives a unique authenticating code. It's the digital version of an artist hand signing the edge of her finished canvas. When you mint an NFT as the original creator, you can also store specific information in the NFT's metadata, like how much commission, and for instance, artists can sign their artwork by including their signature in the file and a contract stating the royalties that the creator will receive as the NFT sells and trades hands in perpetuity. Now, I'm not gonna go into the details, the full details of how to mint NFTs, but you don't have to be a tech whiz to do this. Popular platforms like OpenSea and Rarible will help you do it for a fee. Now, as an artist, NFTs might be appealing because they provide another avenue to sell your work. And like I mentioned earlier, you can include in the encryption a feature so that you get paid a percentage each time the NFT sells. By contrast, when an artist initially sells a physical piece of art, they only get paid that one time. For buyers, the appeal is much like what draws them to buying any sort of art. It's the appeal. There may be a personal interest. There may also be a degree of hype or FOMO involved. You know, when you read about how some NFTs sold for six, seven figures, you may start to think that it is a wise investment, especially if a celebrity's in on it. You wonder, why not me? And as CNET's Daniel Van Boom writes, owning an NFT, much like owning a designer watch or a yacht, for the very, very rich, this is another way to flex their wealth. But to be clear, NFTs are not all fun and games. They're not all fun and flexy. Like all financial instruments, they're susceptible to scams. They're also extremely volatile and risky, so buyer beware. Which is why for now, I prefer to stick to the kind of art that I can hang on my wall. Call me old fashioned. What do you think about NFTs? Drop us a comment below and be sure to like and subscribe. For CNET Money, I'm Farnoosh Tarabi.